Hello Plano Moms, this is Abby and I am here doing the very first um, candidate session for the City Council election coming up in uh, early voting starts April 18th. Um, the actual election day is May 1st here in the City of Plano. And what I really wanted to do was really introduce all the candidates to you and have you really get to know them so that you will be able to make the best decision for you and your family when you actually go to the ballot box. Um, the key thing as well is to know that when you're voting, you need to be informed and, and that's really, really important. So we're gonna run this for around 30 minutes. Um, I have seven questions to ask the candidates and they're gonna start with introducing themselves. So let me start here with you, Chris. Um, please introduce yourself. Absolutely. So uh, my name is Chris Robertson and um, I'm running for Plano City Council, place seven. And I, I, I apologize for the casual attire. I've been out block walking, forgive me. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Abby, and the Plano Moms for hosting this live uh, video and giving me the opportunity to go over some of my views. A um, little bit of my background. I am a native of Dallas, graduate of WT White High School. I joined the military right out of high school. And when I got out of the military, I went to college, went to Virginia Wesleyan in Virginia, and graduated, I rejoined the military, and that's where I met my wife. Uh, but this time I went to OCS and became an army officer. And I did, I did 20 years in the military. My, my wife and I, we did um, you know, military family. We traveled all over the country, the world. And, um, you know, we decided that we were going to come home back to the DFW or the, you know, the Dallas area. And what really attracted us to Plano was this suburban lifestyle, the, uh, the schools and the, the top rating for veterans. Um, don't know if you know, but veteran, or Plano has, a, has an, like an A plus rating for veterans. So we settled on Plano. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that, or I should, I should say many of the things that the military taught me were organizational skills, long range planning, uh, budgeting, stuff like that. And also working with different cultures uh, while in the military, you know, two tours in Afghanistan, I was a liaison for Afghan National Army soldiers. So I was working very closely with different cultures, different religions, and all sorts of different backgrounds. And, and you know, equally so working with, with soldiers, American soldiers, because they all come from, you know, different backgrounds and lifestyles and, and um, you know, cultural religion, stuff like that. So, you know, it's helped me become very nonpartisan in my uh, leadership skills and decision making. So that's um, that's me in a, in a nutshell. Thank you, Chris, and thank you also for your service. I appreciate that. Julie, please introduce yourself. Well, first, Abby, let me thank you for putting this together. I watched the video you did with Karen. <clears throat> excuse me, with Karen earlier about the bond referendum, and I appreciate you just getting voters informed and getting them out to vote. So thank you for that. Uh, my family moved to Plano in 1981. We had moved here from overseas. My parents were working abroad, they're US citizens. And so we, I was born in Milan, Italy, and then we moved to London. And then it was a job at Arco that actually brought my family to Plano. And I've gone through the Plano school system. I was a Sigler Roadrunner back when they were Roadrunners. They're Sigler stars now, but uh, I was a Wilson Ram, a Vines Viking, and a Plano Senior High Wildcat. So I left uh, after graduation, went off to college for four years, and then came right back to Plano and started a career, started my family here. I have two kids in Plano schools, uh, Carpenter and Clark. We've been very happy there. Um, they've been involved in, in the, the sports and everything here. So um, as far as my, my background, I have a degree in social work that I only did for a short while. Now my social work activities are limited to my volunteer work, but I ended up moving into human resources and was the HR director at a boutique consulting firm in the Galleria Towers. Um, that's where I met my business partner at the time. We started our own consulting firm back in 2000 and 2002 called Mind's Eye Solutions. We still have that business today. Uh, I ended up marrying my business partner, so our dynamics changed a little bit. Uh, we started our family and see my, my boys are 13 and 15 now. And we ended up investing in a restaurant in downtown Plano, which we thought we were going to be silent partners in, but it turned out that I became the 
owner operator for about six years. And it was a great opportunity to really get to know the downtown area and get involved in, in downtown. So I was passionate about Plano. I've, I've served in many capacities as a volunteer and I feel like uh, this is the next step in, in my, my giving back to the city I love is serving on council. Thank you, Julie. So the first question goes to you, Chris. How long have you lived in Plano? So we've lived in Plano uh, around five years, just under five years. We, we've lived abroad also. We moved from Korea. That's where I retired out of. So our, my last duty station was Korea for two years. And uh, we moved back here in 2016. That's great. And Julie, the same question to you. We moved here in 1981, so this year marks 40 years that I've lived in Plano. Hard to believe because I don't even look like I'm 40, right? <laughs> Kidding. You do not look like you're 40. <laughs> 40 years, my goodness. Um, so Chris, let's move on to the second question. What changes have you seen since you moved here that you both like and that you dislike? Um, well, I don't know that I've seen a lot of changes um, in my five years. I have one of the th things that uh, I have noticed, and I, you know, through listening to citizens, um, I, I've, I've picked up on a sense of a lack of trust in the current um, governmental body, the the current call it administration. Um, but as far as um, changes i mean well you know I, being a native of dallas i did come up here in the 90s and you know plano was not not the way it is or you know back in the early 90s it, it's changed drastically since then um there were probably what 10 houses in a you know in a square mile radius so it, it has changed quite a bit in that aspect um but since i've been here in the last five years i don't think i've picked up on any changes other than the um the mall has been torn down and they're gonna now try to put something up in replace of that. So there, there's, there's, so I, I guess, yeah, there's some developmental changes going on as far as, uh, you know, what they're gonna do with the land. Um, so those, that, those are the couple, the couple of the changes that I've noticed within the last couple, couple of five years. Thanks, Chris. Um, mm -hmm. Julie, what changes have you seen that you moved here that you both like and you dislike? This could be a really long answer. I've seen a lot of changes in 40 years. I used to play soccer at Park and Preston when those were fields. And I grew up in Pittman Creek Estates and there, we lived on the creek before there were homes even that backed up behind us. So I've, I've watched, I, I've grown up with Plano, literally. Um, I remember going off to college and it would come back and all of a sudden there'd be all these new stores up along uh, Central Expressway near George Bush. Of course, George Bush wasn't there. I like that we've, um, we've done an excellent job developing our, our highways, that we have easy access or to going north, south, east and west, uh, the expansion of, of all of those, um, those main ar arteries in, in the area. I remember when I would leave Plano and be on a two lane dirt road uh, when I came back from college in 1996, I took a job at the hospital in McKinney at the time. It's actually a courthouse now, but, um, and I got my very first cell phone because my husband was concerned about me driving from Plano to McKinney because there was absolutely nothing in between <laughs> the two places. Um, what other things? I, I just, I love how the city has developed the parks and recs. The, you know, the Muhlenbeck Center was not here um, until I guess it's been there 16 years. So I've seen that develop. I've seen the city continue to invest in improving our facilities, our libraries, our parks, our trails. Uh, I live over in the Hunters Glen area. I'm just across from Schimmelfinnick Library and they've done a beautiful job, Parks and Rec did, of, um, of re redoing all of that, the big lake area, um, putting in new playgrounds, um, there's just a lot. I feel like Plano is a really well professionally run city. We have been on the top, you know, best of however many lists time and time again. And, and that's not an accident. That's because we have staff that is incredible. Um, and um, as far as things that I don't like, I mean, obviously traffic has gotten, gotten worse. That, that's going to happen as we continue to grow. We're just about aged out as far as space goes. And um, 
But as far as other dislikes, I, I, I really, I'd have to really think on that. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of a pain seeing the, the construction on the streets, all, you know, all the time. But at the same time, I'm happy that we're investing in that so that we don't have four streets to be driving on all the time. So while it's an inconvenience, it's necessary. So overall, I mean, I really love my city and I, I think, I think it's run well and we have amazing amenities and um, I've seen, I've just seen it improve in many, many ways. Thank you, Julie. Chris, have you gotten to know the city by volunteering for any of the, the many programs that the city offers to do so? Um, no, I haven't volunteered um, as far as, no, I haven't, uh, you know, we, well, we taught Sunday school down in Dallas, but, you know, my, my parents lived in Dallas, um, but, no, haven't volunteered for any programs. Uh, we did hand out, I'm sorry, well, we did work for the food bank during the storm. That's great. Julie, the same question to you. Yeah, I've, I have a long history of volunteering in the, in the city, um, even as a teenager. Um, recently, like um, uh, Chris mentioned, with Snowmageddon and everything, I, I was very involved with uh, the Plant Overnight Warming Station, working with them to collect the needed donations um, for the people that were their guests there during that time. Um, I was over at Grace Outreach uh, one evening. I helped to procure a, a hot meal and serve that to the people that were displaced due to the lack of power. So that would be, you know, recent, I guess, volunteering, but long-term, I mean, um, I've served on many, many nonprofit boards and committees. I, I was on the Historic Downtown Plano Association board for eight years, which encompassed me sitting on more committees than I can count for every event that we had, whether it's Art Fest or Oktoberfest or um, the Long Table event, the Dine, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the Long Table event. Um, I was on the Historic, uh, excuse me, the Assistance Center of uh, Collin County's board for four years the Plano Parks Foundation Board, which a lot of people don't know about, that when I say that, they think, I, I mean, I served on a city board or commission and it's actually was a nonprofit that was started back in the 80s. I wanna say, I think it was like 83 or 85 with some money from Ross Perot. Um, we had people that wanted to plant trees in people's honor at the parks or put a park bench in with a, a plaque on it. And they needed a vehicle to funnel the money through basically they couldn't give the money to the city so they would give it to the foundation and we would be able to fund those types of projects uh, I served on the theater Britain board for six years um, which Abby I hope hopefully you've got to make it to some of the pantos there that is a British tradition um, and then I've been very involved in the in the PTAs the Carpenter PTA the Christie PTA I'm now getting involved in the Clark PTA I served as a board member in hospitality and ways and means um, communications. I was recently appointed by city council to serve on the uh, 2020 uh, census committee. So I just wrapped that up not too long ago. Um, anyway, those are just some examples. Those are, but I've, yes, that's, um, my parents have always been very involved in the community and um, have instilled that as, as something that's important to get back. Thank you, Julie. Um, so my next question, have you served on a city board or commission? And what have you learned from doing so, Chris? Well, <clears throat> no, I haven't served on a city board, but I, um, you know, I've, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, the, I haven't served on a city board. I haven't really lived here. I don't think, you know, long enough. Um, so when we moved back here, um, I, my wife and I, we started working um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, a uh, teacher down in Dallas, middle school teacher. Um, so, no, as far as like, like um, local politics, we, we um, haven't really, I guess, you know, been too much involved up until, up until now. Uh, a lot has changed. So, um, and, you know, I guess to answer your question, no, I, I haven't. So I'll give you a, a, a like a, a, a part B question to that then. If you could choose one city board or commission to serve on, which one would you serve on and why? City board. So 
give me a few city boards to choose from, such as like school board or? For example, Parks and Rec is, is one board. I mean, Julie knows quite a lot of them. Um, there's a few different ones. Um, obviously, planning and zoning is, is another option, which um, many local people like to get involved with. Mm -hmm. Is City Council one of those boards? Well, I think City Council, and I did Leadership Plano not so long ago, so I see City Council as being kind of at the top tier of that. I don't know if, if you would agree with me, Julie. And they're kind of like the board of directors of a, of a business, essentially, that is there for oversight and to represent the constituents. Yeah. And then they have the boards and commissions that separately will, that, that are citizens, they're not, you know, staff members that will, will make advisements and recommendations to council based yeah. on information they receive from city staff, usually. I, th I think, um, um, I guess if I were to have to choose one of those, I think planning and zoning would be uh, would be interesting. You want to tell us briefly why? Oh um, well, I I think you know having some say in what um, what businesses um, you know want to um, you know drop anchor here in Plano and, and grow has uh, would, would interest me. I like I would like to um, have some say in that, and um, you know what what uh, we're doing with the, the the little bit of space that we do have, how we're going to allocate it. Um, you know, I think you know that would that would be I think that's a necessary function for uh, for someone who can you know ask critical questions and not just um, you know. I guess just let any, anybody come in and, and, you know, um, open up whatever, whatever business or, you know, they want to, or, or, or I guess, um, you know, whatever, uh, I lack a better term, whatever building they just want to, want to put up. I, I think, I think it would be interesting to, to be on the decision process of, you know, allocating space for, for certain things. Yeah. Great. Um, Julie, let me ask you that question. You've served on a few, so maybe pick one city board or commission and let us know what you learned from doing so. Actually, that's not true. I've never okay. served on a city board or commission. I, I, um, had toyed with the idea. I'd been asked a few times and the ones that I would be interested in were the cultural affairs, um, which are responsible for determining which uh, nonprofit and arts programs will be funded with city money. Um, planning and zoning obviously would be interesting, but, but no, I've never actually served, believe it or not. I, I, I watch a lot of the meetings. I watch a lot of the planning and zoning meetings, um, but I've spent six years uh, running the restaurant, which is, you know, is a very demanding seven days a week job. So in the last 10 years, six years of those were spent doing that. And before that I had very young children and um, I, now I've just stayed very involved in, in other nonprofits and, and volunteered through the city. I did do the census committee. So I learned a lot about the city and how important it is to count everybody so that we get proper funding and, and districting representation. But, um, but no, I have actually never served on an official city uh, board or commission. All right, thank you for your answer. So Chris, what have you learned about the operation of the city government and um, have you invested any personal time in doing so? And if so, how? <clears throat> well, um, <laughs> what have I learned about the operation? Um, so most of my time has been spent um, spinning up this campaign, getting it going. Um, I have been to a couple um, uh, city council meetings. I've, I've, I've watched one uh, planning and zoning meeting virtually over Zoom. And um, I guess what I've learned is that, um, you know, I, Plano is growing and um, it has grown. But I think what I've what I've picked up on is 
that what we need to really focus on is, is responsible growth. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's one reason that I'm running is because I want to make sure that in our process of, of growing, we are, we're doing it responsibly. So, um, I don't want to say that I've, you know, I've picked up on, well, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've picked up on, on the fact that we are growing, but, um, you know, I want to make sure that we are growing responsibly. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, Judy, the same question to you. Um, I went through leadership Plano class 30 best class ever. And I guess that was about 2013. I've also participated. I graduated from the citizens police Academy, um, which was a phenomenal program. It was uh, every, every week we were learning something new and, um, it really made me respect, but well, all of these programs I'll finish. I also went through the citizens fire Academy and graduated from that. So between leadership Plano and both of the citizens police and fire academies, I, I already knew our city was well run and that I loved my city, but I had a whole new respect for understanding the legacy of, uh, of just smart planning and foresight that our city had. I mean, even if you just look at our, our city being built back, you know, however many years ago with this, this, they built the infrastructure of the streets and the fact that we've got three lanes, uh, even though our city was so much smaller, but we were prepared for, for the growth that they knew was coming. So, so that's what I've mostly, I learned how well the city was run and, and kind of who, who reports to who and who's responsible for making what decisions. And um, in leadership, I know we kind of learned about all of the different boards and commissions and, and how they work. We learned a little bit about planning and zoning and, and actually were given the opportunity to go through an exercise of, of using a real example of, uh, of a decision that had to be make, made on planning and zoning. And we walked through the process and then found out what the actual results were from that. So um, they're great, they're great programs. I, I really enjoyed them. I remember doing that too, Julie, and it mm -hmm. was really insightful. Um, so the next question to you, Chris, um, do you have an affiliation with a political party? Um, and if so, which one and why are you affiliated with that choice? <clears throat> well, um, I, I do, um, I'm affiliated with the Republican party and, um, generally I'm a, I'm a bit more conservative. I'm, I'm Catholic. So I have a lot of the core Catholic beliefs. Uh, also, you know, being in the military, um, I'm a bit more, you know, uh, structured, in a sense. And, um, you know, I, I mean, why I'm affiliated with that party, I, you know, I, and I understand, I mean, understand, you know, I understand that uh, city council is a nonpartisan position. So I'm not bringing any sort of Republican or Democratic Party, um, you know, influence with me. I'm, you know, it's, I, you know, it's a nonpartisan position. Um, but, you know, yeah, I'm, I guess why I'm affiliated with that party, it, um, it's what I've grown up with. You know, I, I am a little bit more fiscally conservative. Um, I want to make sure I'm spending my money on, I'm, you know, spending my money on something that I'm um, going to, you know, get something out of it. Um, and, and um Let's see what else yeah it just a lot of it has to do with my my faith background and um the fact that i'm just a little bit a little bit fiscally conservative yeah thank you chris the same question to you julie um well i do believe that municipal elections should be nonpartisan. um if you look at my endorsement list you'll find both republicans and and uh, democrats and independence. Um, I think that's part of what makes me such a strong candidate is that I'm very bipartisan. Um, that being said, I will, um, I will accept any invitation to any forum, regardless of what party. 
and I'll accept any invitation to interview for an endorsement from, from any party. Um, but I, I'm here to represent all of Plano, so I don't, I don't really think what my personal party is matters. Thank you very much, both of you, for that answering that question. And the final question for today is, what type of decisions would you make if you were elected and what changes would you like to see if you filled a seat at the city council? Chris. So repeat the question, what? It would be, what type of decisions would you make if you were elected? And what changes would you like to see if you did fill a seat at the city council? Well, I can tell you what changes I'd like to see. I'd like to see more transparency and I would um, definitely allow the, the uh, citizens of Plano to see all cards on the deck when it comes to, um, you know, what, what developers want to do, stuff like that. I want, I will bring, you know, complete transparency. Um, and the first part of the question was, uh, what again? What type of decisions would you make if you were elected? Responsible decisions. I would make responsible and well, you know, critical, critically thought out uh, decisions. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, Julie, the same question to you. I've had a hard time with this as far as like immediate changes. I think of some little small petty things like limiting the number of, of campaign signs on corners and things like that. And, and I work for a printer. So you'd think I would be you know, kind of shooting myself in the foot by saying that, but I feel like um, it just, sometimes it seems like overkill. And I think anyway, um, so like I said, I, there's little, little things that I don't even feel are, are really worth mentioning that um, I, I would like to make sure that when we are appointing people to our boards and commissions that they reflect our community. We have such a diverse community and I, I've seen improvement in this over the last few years, but I wanna make sure that we're being very conscientious that, that the, um, the, the people on those boards and commissions look like the people in our, in our community. And what type of decisions would you make if you were elected? What do you mean decisions like a specific on a specific item? Mm. Well, I know, for example, I've watched many city council meetings and I know there's a, a lot of decisions being made all the time. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's full consensus across all of the eight positions, including the mayor. Um, but, you know, given that you have come at it with your own kind of uh, experience of the city, um, what type of decisions have you do you think you would make if you had the opportunity if you to be on city council okay so could i give you an example of maybe a decision that was made that i didn't agree with that i would have made differently yeah. okay okay so um back in last june i believe it was the city council um had a vote on whether we should pass a mask ordinance or not and i actually put a, a poll out i think i put it out on plano moms now that i think about it uh, I put a poll out and it wasn't long before the meeting. I mean, it was less than less than a week. And there was there were over 700 responses um, when asked, do you feel like Plano should pass a, a mandatory mask ordinance? And if I remember correctly, it was like 92 percent of Plano moms said yes, that they were very much in favor of that. And Plano moms is nonpartisan, it's a very diverse group. Um, so I felt like that was a really good representation of our city, or at least the moms in, in the city of Plano. And I passed this information along to council so they would have that um, when they made their decision. I also um, personally felt like it was the right thing to do for small businesses as a former restaurant owner. I ran into something similar. It wasn't obviously during the pandemic, but um, at one point when I owned my restaurant, vaping became popular. And so I had customers that were vaping in the restaurant. And then I had other customers that were complaining about the people vaping. And I had to choose who to alienate. And it was, I was so happy when the city passed the ordinance that said you couldn't vape, or vape inside a public place. And um, because it took me out of, of alienating my customers and allowed, um, in the case of the masks, it, you know, it's, it's for everyone's safety. And so... I felt like by not pass, passing it, um, we were we were hurting small businesses. I mean, I've seen on, on social media now that Abbott removed the mandate 
where people are saying, well, I guess I'm going back to curbside pickup now. I'm not going into stores anymore if, if they're not going to enforce uh, a mask ordinance. So, so, you know, all people, some felt it was too much government control or whatever. Um, I felt like it was the right thing to do, not only for people's safety, but for, um, for the benefit of small businesses to keep them from hurting any more than they already were. So that's one decision I would have made differently if I were on council at that time. Thank you very much. So that brings me to the end of this live video with both of you. Um, it's been really great to get to know you both. Um, so which position are you uh, standing for, Chris? Which position am I? As, oh, uh, Plano City Council, place seven. Place seven, yes. great. And yes, Julie, which, pos which position are you also standing for? I'm also running for place seven. Great. Okay. So this has been really, really useful for us because obviously both of you are uh, only filling one seat. So you're both running for the same seat. So it's great for everyone to get to know you both a bit better and for you to um, have answered these questions honestly and openly has been really, really helpful. So thank you both for your time. And, um, and thank you for I having us. Yeah, yes. and I um, yeah. definitely um, wish you both the best of luck and thank you for the effort, the time and, you know, even putting yourself in this position to be elected uh, for a place. I know it takes a lot of hard work and effort. And so thank you both very, very much. My yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Have a great night. Thanks, guys. Yes. Thanks.